Welcome back to the video on how to create a request definition. In this video, we are going to focus on the service level agreement to the service request. Uh, just a quick recap, we've uh, just left the previous video, which was how to create the approval process. We've tested it, everything works fine. So now we're going to create the SLA to this request definition. So the first thing you're going to do is log into uh, Remedy Force, and you'll go to the Remedy Force Administration tab. And at the very bottom, you'll go to the Manage Workflows and Other Processes, and you'll select Agreements. So in this environment, we don't have any SLAs whatsoever, so we're going to just create a brand new one. We're going to call it Hardware and Software Request Standard. So if you've been following us throughout all the other videos, you know that there's probably going to be another SLA for the executive team. So this one here, we're purposely adding the word standard so we can uh, distinguish between both SLAs. So we'll add the description. Um, agreement type. This will be a service level agreement. And the service we know is end user services. So let's go ahead and select that. And for the accounts, we're going to apply this to all the accounts. And the effective date, we're going to use today's date. And until we'll go 2020, 20, January 1st. And for the review date, We'll do the same thing. Support hours, we know what the support hours are. So let's go ahead and select that. And the agreement owner, we know that uh, Carol Brady is our owner. All right, so we can go ahead and save this screen. We're now going to move to the service targets and here's where we want to create our target. So we're going to click on the little plus and the title for this target will be standard hardware software request 10 days. And for description, we're going to put here a silly use for the standard hardware software request. All right. And now for our service targets uh, applies to incident. Uh, we know that service requests uh, work off the incident object. Uh, the target type based on the spreadsheet we received, uh, it is a resolution time. We have our supporting hours and then the target obviously is 10 days. So let's uh, change this to 10 business days. And let's save this. So now we can move to the qualifications. This is where we determine which service request leverages this SLA. So since we're creating this one for the standard request definition, we're going to select that request definition on this pick list. So we'll look for request definition equals, and we're going to go ahead and select it from the list. So if we just open this up a little bit, we see it's hardware software request standard. Let's go ahead and select that. And we're going to select none and add it. So basically this service request, once the service request is created, this SLA uh, will kick in. Now there's an option here. Uh, originally when I created this, I added a second criteria and my criteria was status equals approved. So basically uh, the SLA would not even qualify unless this, the uh, service request was approved. Now you may want to do it that way. The, the catch to that would be if you're trying to measure an SLA, you'd want to measure it from the moment it was created, like from the client's perspective, the moment he submits it, he's expecting this in 10 days. It may take two or three days before the approvals take place. So you need to actually encompass those dates into the SLA. So I chose to not uh, specify status equals approved. I'm actually going to start the SLA the moment the ticket is, is, is created. So now we're going to go ahead and save this. There we go. Now the next tab is the measurement. So by default, when you create a brand new SLA, um, 
this value of status equals open will be there. We need to modify this in our case because the moment the SR is created, we're applying a template to update the status to pending approval. And we want our SLA to start at that time, the moment the client submits the request. So we'll have to update this to pending approval. The next section right below is the section where you can define when to pause the clock if you need to. So let's say, for example, you needed to get more information from the client in order to complete the request. Well, you can update the status to waiting for a customer, and in doing so, that will pause the clock. There's no reason why you should be penalized on the SLA if you've waited three or four days for the customer to reply back to you. Let's look at stopping the clock. You want the SLA clock to stop at a certain time. By default, we have status equals close. You may want to add, I'm going to just change this to or. You may want to add the status equals completed. That's another status that is available. And you may have some custom statuses as well in your environment that you want to make sure that you, you update this, uh, this section with those, with those statuses. And of course, you want to add the rejected as well. And we're going to save this. And finally, the milestones and the actions. So according to the spreadsheet we received, uh, she wants the provisioning queue to be notified at 50% of the SLA. So once 50% uh, of the clock time has expired, they want a notification to go to the provisioning queue to follow up on this request, find out what's keeping this request. So we're going to go ahead and click on the little plus. So here we're going to select a uh, percentage of time elapsed. And this will be 50%. So you want to send an email and the email you want to send is service request percentage of time remaining service request time elapsed and you're going to send this to the incident owner which will be the provisioning queue so we're looking for incident owner ID right here so the individual that has the ticket assigned so if it's a queue uh, the queue will get notified. If it's an individual, the individual will get notified. So let's click on add. So now we've just added the action to send an email to the uh, service request owner when 50% of the time has elapsed. So let's go ahead and save this. Now we can close our window, save the final window. But you may want to create another milestone to send it to the owner when the service target is missed. So here we're going to select service target missed and we're going to send an email. So we're going to select the service target is missed email right here. And that one will be sent to the incident owner for starters. And we might want to CC the agreement owner. So in this case, um, Carol Brady. She may want to be notified as well whenever an, uh, a SLA was missed. We'll click OK. And we'll add this one. And we'll save the window. And we can close it. So now we have our two milestones. The first one, if you now it's highlighted, the first one 50%. And if you select the next one, you'll see it's the missed one. We're good. Now, Obviously, we need to activate this. Let's activate it and save it. Close the window. So now we've just completed our very first uh, service level agreement uh, in our environment. Now, before we test it, let's make sure that our milestone processor is actually turned on. So you'll go to the Remedy Force Administration Home tab, and you can go to Application Settings, General Application Settings. And you can scroll to the very bottom and you'll see the, the milestone processor. Mine happens to be turned on. Uh, I can stop it and then restart it. 
uh, you'll notice that there's um, it processes the moss on every five minutes so obviously if it changes made right now it may take up to five minutes before we see a, an update on the screen so let's turn it back on so now we can go to self-service and test our request so let's refresh our self-service page let's select the request And we'll do someone else. We'll do good old Bobby again. And this time it's software. Or a Mac this time. And let's pick a Mac application. And submit. Request 540. We'll go to the console. We'll refresh our console. Here's 540. And one of the first things you should notice is in the top left corner, is the blue target is turned on. Let's click on it. And I'll just bring over the window on the other screen here. go so the status in process the clock is running it's got 10 business days and a resolution time and it's got all the information we need and this SLA is uh, is applied to the service request now let's double check to make sure that on the details there's still no task it's still pending approval with, which is how we designed it I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch these videos I hope that you found them very informative uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to add them to the blog or reach out to your assigned customer success manager. Thanks again.